Today's video will be focusing on machining some light weighting pockets into a brand new S7 tool steel weapon for Bloodsport. Bloodsport will have a few new weapons this year, every one made from S7 tool steel. Everyone who watches BattleBots knows there's an element of rock, paper, scissors to it. Some designs or geometries are better to counter others. Certain weapon types are better against certain opponents. But even with a single bot, it can be beneficial to make trade-offs between bite, spin-up time, and weapon weight in order to prepare for different opponents. Today's video will be about one such new weapon, dubbed the Thick Bar, one designed for fighting vertical spinners. Last year's weapon was made of 3 quarter inch S7 tool steel, and the new tri bar you may have seen is the same thickness, but this new bar will be 1.25 inches thick. Bloodsport's going to be much more powerful this year, and around 20 pounds more will be dedicated to weapon mass compared to last year. However, even with the extra mass, a 3 quarter inch bar is too flimsy to hold up to a direct hit from a vertical spinner when it sticks out almost 2 feet from the central axis. Thus, a thicker bar was needed. The extra thickness is great, but as a solid piece of 1.25 inch thick metal, it weighs over 70 pounds, and the stabilizer fins and bearing blocks will push it well over the 80 pound limit. After many simulations to determine the best way to reduce weight and maintain as much rigidity as possible, this pocket design was chosen as the best option. These pockets are about 15.5 inches long, at the widest over 4 inches wide, and 3 quarter inches deep, meaning each will remove over 9 pounds of mass from the bar. As with all of our tool steel weapons, this bar was water jet cut to start. After the water jet cutting, it was sent to Justin who brought it to me at the makerspace where I was tasked with removing all that material from the bar using the Tormach PCNC. There are a number of challenges involved with doing this. First of all, tool steel is hard. All the metal I've cut on the Tormach thus far has been 6061 aluminum at around 95 brittle hardness. When fully hardened, S7 tool steel can be well over 500 brittle hardness. It would be nearly impossible to remove this much material from a hardened steel weapon, but thankfully the steel is in its annealed state after being water jet, in the realm of 200 brittle hardness. Still, this makes it exponentially slower and tougher to machine than aluminum. Second, the Tormach PCNC1100 has an x-axis travel of 18 inches and a 34 inch long table. The pocket being 15.5 inches long meant the weapon would overhang the side of the machine, and it would need to be flipped around in order to machine the second pocket. This also meant indicating off the central bore of the bar wasn't an option. Thanks to Formlabs where Justin works, I was able to design some 3D printable guides that slotted into the T-slots of the table and allowed us to align the bar parallel to the X-axis, and we had those SLS printed the next day. Still, it was critical that we align everything perfectly on both sides or else the bar would be too imbalanced. Third, because the heat treatment process would take so long and the BattleBots timeline is so short, we needed to get the bar machined within five days of when we got it. I could easily run a 3 quarter inch deep cut in aluminum with a width of cut of an eighth inch or more in 6061. However, with steel this hard, I was forced to back all the way off to 0.05 inch width of cut, and try as we might, cutting deeper than a quarter inch wasn't working. The one half inch carbide bit I was using could more than take it, but the machine simply could not. The Tormach was losing steps from the forces involved in pushing through the material in X and Y, the spindle was audibly slowing down and at one point stalled completely, and the tool even pulled out of a tool holder at one point due to the tremendous downward cutting forces created by the downward spiral flutes in the tool. Due to all of these setbacks and challenges, making the first pocket took more than two and a half hours just of machining time, and Justin and I spent more than six hours at the makerspace that night. The tool was quite worn down, and the last depth of cut had a clear line where wear had built up from the three one quarter inch depth passes. We needed a new tool, but it was done. It was already past midnight. Same day prime delivery, anyone? The next night, we met up again for side two. This time, however, we ran into a new problem. When I first put the new tool in the tool holder we'd used the night before, the tool was wobbling visibly. With a dial gauge, I saw over 30 thousandths of an inch of runout at the tool. There should be less than two. This wouldn't work. I tried a couple more tool holders to no avail. However, this was a blessing in disguise as it forced us to use a half inch R8 collet directly in the Tormach spindle instead of all the added length of the tool holder. This reduced the distance from the spindle nose to the tool tip from over 3.6 inches to about 1.5 inches. That meant the tool was way more rigid, and this time the constant screeching chatter noises were gone. We were able to run the program at 200% speed, so it was only about 90 minutes of machine time. The tool was also significantly less worn due to the reduced runout. Finally, our work was done, and the weapon was ready to go off to heat treat. I'm really looking forward to competing in Season 5, and you can bet the new blood sport will be better than ever. I've got plenty more work to do, so look forward to several more videos covering my contribution to the team in the next few weeks. 
I've been posting already about the other parts I'm working on on Instagram, so if you want to stay as up to date as possible, follow me there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow Bloodsport's social media too. Thanks for watching!